When I was 19 years old, I was living in Chicago and I was co-editing New Left Notes out of the National Students for Democratic Society office. And we had heard about this beautiful wall called the Freedom Wall on Chicago's south side, painted by black people representing the black struggle. So we decided it would be really nice to have this picture in the newspaper. So I and this other young woman, young white woman, we went down to the south side of Chicago. You know, and we got out of the car, and I took the fit pictures. And this young black woman came up to me and said, what are you doing? I said, I'm taking a picture. I'm from SDS. You know, she says, who the hell is SDS? I don't care. Who, what are you doing in our community? Who gives you the right to come rip off our art? And we got into a small back and forth because I was, I was shocked, sort of. You know, I was, it was like I, I couldn't comprehend it at that moment. And it was resolved. I gave the film back to her. And I went back. And it took me a couple, it took me maybe a year to really understand about that people have a right to their culture. They have a right to, to invite you into their house. You know, and that I, even though I was a white radical, that I thought that I, you know, because I was a radical, that they gave me a passport to go anywhere without permission was a wrong thing. And it taught me a really, it taught me a lesson about how do you respect other peoples. And and, I, and I'm, I'm really happy. I'm fortunate that, that that happened to me at that point because I think that in the long run, though I didn't understand it the next day, that it enabled me from out of my own personal experience to, under, to, to understand what does it mean, self-determination, people's right to their own culture and a right to control their own destiny. If you believe in human rights, then you have to believe, then I believe in the liberation of all peoples and people's right to their own nations, the right to their culture, to their land, to their resources. I do not believe that women can be liberated unless, they, unless societies are liberated, until there are different social structures, until the means of, the, of production are controlled by the people who do the producing. And that means women. That means men, and that means whole nations. And therefore, I feel as a woman, my liberation is tied to the liberation of, of all the women in the world and all oppressed people and exploited peoples in the world. I think revolution and freedom is about li giving life to our creativity and our spirit as human beings, irregardless of race or nationality. And I don't think that it can't, it cannot grow when one is in an oppressor situation or an oppressed situation. Um, but on the other hand, as a revolutionary, I want to be part of a process which creates the basis for all people to live well. I don't think revolution is about trying to make everyone equally poor. I think it's about making everyone able to, to have the kind of comforts of society, to be able to be fulfilled in their work, and to be able to see the, the fruits of their labor. Well, I became, I came of age in a period of revolution, when armed struggle was being successfully employed by the Vietnamese, that revolution was in Latin America, Che Guevara was struggling in Bolivia along with, with many other people whose names we know and we don't know, men and women. And I always, one of the things that I learned from that was that I really believed in the, the question of two, three, many Vietnams. And the black liberation struggle was really beginning to flower in this country, being able to assert itself. The question of not only self-defense, but being able to fight back and being able to take on the state in certain kinds of way. From a, a not organized, from a mass, not organized level of insurrections in, in Detroit, in Watts, in Chicago, in Newark, to to more organized forms of struggle, and one of the things that 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 really impressed me was when I met young men and women from the Black Panther Party, and the kind of of being in this organization and fighting for the liberation of their people, and not having the fear.
having the having the, the moral courage, the physical courage, and the the knowledge of that this was the right and just way to go forward impressed me a lot. And I believed that 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 if I supported this process, that I had to be willing to be able to engage in that. Since the early 70s, I have been a target of COINTELPRO, though I can't show you any documents because I can't get any papers. But I think that the US government, that number one, they fear revolution, they fear a change in the status, and they fear the liberation of black people, of Puerto Rico, of Native American people. They fear the breakup of the empire. They fear the loss of the wealth and power that, that the ruling class has here. And they fear the people who are committed to doing that. I have a 70-year sentence for um, participating in the liberation of Asada Shakur, support for the black liberation struggle in solidarity with the, uh, with the Black Liberation Army in various actions. It was called a conspiracy by the government, a criminal conspiracy. And I think because I was a white person who has been committed since 1968, perhaps, until now, and that no matter what they have done to me, the years in prison, the years in isolation, that I have not renounced that. I have never recanted that. Asada represents the strength and the spirit of the liberation of black people's struggle for liberation in this country. And when that spirit, that representation of that spirit is freed, then, then it, there's hope. There's hope for, for black people. There's hope for all people who love liberation and who love freedom. When I first went to prison in 1973, there were, I didn't, I was from, Several years, I was with no other women political prisoners. So I sort of had to, it was like feeling my way. What is, what is it to be a woman political prisoner? You know, what is, what is the standard I should meet? So I think one of the most important things of being in prison, a privilege even, was that I met Lolita Lebron, one of the, the nationalist pr Puerto Rican prisoners. And she is truly an amazing woman, a woman who, has been, who was willing to live, to die, to endure what was ever necessary for the independence of her people, of her nation. And I learned an incredible amount about Puerto Rico and about the struggle for independence. And I think that, you know, I really it's, it's just, mostly I feel privileged and honored to have been able to even been in prison with her, to have known her a little bit and to have shared struggles and conversations and, and time with her. One of my favorite poems is a poem by Mario Benedetti, which is why, it's called, Why Do We Sing? Or you ask why we sing. And he says that we sing because it rains in the trenches and we are militants of life and because we cannot or we will not let the song become ashes. And I think that, that if, you de if, if we're committed to struggle, that we're committed to life, and we're committed to that never dying. I believe in living. I believe in birth. I believe in the sweat of love and the fire of truth. And I believe that a lost ship steered by tired, seasick sailors can still be guided home to port.